Well, what you saying, ladies and gents? It is your boy, Bukat Sam, and we are back in today for another video. Today's video, I'm going to be predicting the Premier League table for this up and coming season. It's going to be controversial. Please don't cry. And whilst you're at it, smash that like button and please subscribe. You don't realize how much it helps. Oh, I'm ready for this. It's going to be a corker. Let's roll that intro. It does pay me to say this, but with these videos and these predictions, we have to start off with the relegation sides. And in 20th place, I do believe it will sadly be the Bees. Brentford, I don't think have got a strong enough and deep enough squad. Yes, Ivan Tony will get you goals. I predict he'll get between 10 and 15 goals. Obviously, he won't have the season like he did last year. He's not going to translate 33 goals from the Championship and bang in hundreds. We saw with Ollie Watkins, he had a pretty good season last year. And I think Ivan Tony will have something similar. But my problem is with this free-flowing attacking style of play that Thomas Frank likes with this 3-5-2 that can change into a 4-2-3-1 system which we saw in the playoff final against Swansea, I just worry how this is going to translate because it's very easy and methodical to, do, to play against. When you look play against these big Premier League sides, they will be able to work it out. And obviously in the Championship, Brentford were always the favourites going into every game. They would take the game to other sides and I don't think they can do that in this league. And hopefully Thomas Frank isn't naive and has changed the system, but we'll have to wait and see. Yes, defensively, they had a pretty good season last year, conceding the least amount of shots per game, which was 8.4. But that's not good enough in the Premier League. They really need to try and just shrink that down. But I think one player who will be an integral part of this side, if they've got any chance of staying up, will be Ethan Pinnock. But the third most amount of minutes for them last season, a very, very good player. I just One thing that really bugs me with this side is... They've got no older players, they've got no people who are level-headed, who've got this experience. Their oldest player is Pontus Janssen, 30 years of age, and I really think they'll want to look to him, and he's not the kind of role model you want. He's all over the place, loves the yellow card, very hot-headed, and he's like just a really an angry version of David Luiz. I know that's a bit harsh, but hopefully Brentford will prove me wrong, but sadly I think Brentford, 20th place. 19th place now, sadly, I think will be Watford. And the thing is, will Watford keep their manager for more than five minutes? Cisco Munez came in in December, and since he took charge, he won 18 of his 26 games. He was crucial. The form they showed was unreal, but can they carry that into the Premier League? And if it doesn't go well to start off with, will the board actually back him? Because we know what Watford are like. They just literally sack their manager constantly. It's a drop of a hat. It's, it's constant. And every manager is in the firing line. And I do worry for him because... My one worry is, yes, they conceded only 30 goals last season, which is the joint lowest in the history of the championship for a team that had been promoted, which is crazy to think of. But they didn't score goals. The top goal scorer last season was Saar with 13. Then after that, it was Troy Deeney with 9 and João Pedro with 7, which isn't good enough, really. And you, you can't take that into the Premier League and expect to stay up. And that's where I do worry for them. I don't think... Yes, I know they've signed Josh King. They've got Troy Deeney, João Pedro. Uh, I just don't think it's enough. I really don't think it's enough, and that is where I think they'll be struggling. I think they'll be defensively solid. I don't think they'll concede that many goals. They'll eke out lots of nil-nil draws or lose by one goal to nil, but they're, what, they're my worry. They're not going to score goals. and They're not going to really trouble sides, and I think they'll be quite an easy team to play against. So, I'm sorry, guys. Watford, 19th place. 18th place, now the final relegated side I think will be Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira has taken on a huge job here, a side which do not create chances and do not score. They only scored 41 league goals but had the second lowest XG out of any side in the Premier League. And Roy Hodgson's philosophy last year was to have a solid defence and then they move on from that and they counter-attack sides. Patrick Vieira is known when he was at Nice to playing out from the back and free-flowing attacking football. And this whole change in philosophy that is going to come to the club it's going to be too much. I can see this going horribly wrong. A lot of new signings, a lot of reliance on young players. I, I can't see how this is going to work. Hopefully they prove me wrong because Crystal Palace are a nice side. They've got a brilliant set of fans, but I don't. I can't see them staying up, guys. I just can't. 11 goals, top goal scorer last season, Zaha, and then Benteke scored 10. They don't score enough goals. That's as plain and simple as that. And if they're going to play this free-flowing, building out from the back style of play, Gaeta is not the man. Gaeta had the worst passing accuracy, sorry, the second worst passing accuracy out of any goalkeeper in the league last season. And he makes mistakes. And I don't think he'll stay up with him. And I think he'll be found out this year. So that is my hot take. 18th place, relegated. Crystal Palace. 17th place now, I think will be Southampton. This is all because of Danny Ings moving away. Originally, I thought they potentially could even push on for the top half of the table because I really like Southampton's style of play. This high pressure, this high energy style of play. 
but they've lost their talisman, their 12 goal scorer, striker, even though he was injured all last, like, quite, sorry, I say all of it, a majority of last season, he was still their top goal scorer, and he got so many assists for them, he's literally the main man there, and he's gone, and they're getting in Adam Armstrong, who, I know he scored 28 goals last season, but XG said he should have scored 33, so he's finishing his idea, and he won't get as many chances as he did at Blackburn at Southampton, so I think they're going to struggle there this year, and they're not going to get enough goals, and I think Southampton will just about stay up in 17th place. 16th place for me will be Norwich. I don't know why, but I have a sneaky feeling they're going to stay up. Yes, they've lost Buendia, but I don't think Todd Cantwell will be leaving. That could be famous last words by the time this video goes out. He could have left for Villa, but I think he will stay because I think they're building something here. The signing of Rashica from Werder Bremen, the attacking winger, the tricky winger, is a, is a direct replacement for Buendia. He's obviously not as good, but they've also invested in players like Ben Gibson and Billy Gilmore. And Ben Gibson last season had the most progressive passes forward accurately per game from any defender in the league and I think it'll be huge for and to help them build from the back but not only does he get that he him and Grant Hanley together will put their whole bodies on the line they'll defend where the heart and the sleeve the proper no-nonsense defenders so yes they have that ability to pass the ball forward but I think one thing that Daniel Farker will really home in on is that being defensively solid this season that I some some reason I think with Timo Puki they're going to stay up there we go I don't know if I'm being stupid here, but I'm going to I'm going to stick with it. 16th place, Norwich. 15th place now, I think, will be Wolverhampton Wonders. And yes, Raul Jimenez is back and he will bring the goals, but I think they'll really miss out on Pedro Neto, the player who will be injured. Potentially, could be months. We don't know yet. Supposedly, it'll be around about Christmas time, New Year's time, but we'll wait and see. Bruno Lager or Bruno Lager, Bruno Larger. I don't know how you say his name. I'm, I'm not going to... I just said him all there, so I can't really have butchered it. One of them will be right, surely, guys. Please let me know how you pronounce his name but who knows whether he'll play the three at the back system or the four at the back we've seen him in pre-season try out both and I think it'll be a tricky season I think it'll be a slow starting season but when players like Pedro Neto will be back in the side and hopefully Ruben Neves, Ruben Neves can get back his form because he didn't have the best of seasons last year but I'm hoping Wolves can kind of bring that togetherness back like back to it after they, obviously they lost Raul Jimenez and they lost Diego Jota they really missed the goal so I'm hoping Raul Jimenez can be the player to help them. But 15th place, Wolverhampton Wanderers. 14th place now, I think it will be Newcastle United. And I think this all comes down this season to one man, Callum Wilson, Mr. Newcastle, their talisman, who was directly involved in 12 goals and 5 assists. That's a direct goal involvement in every 122 minutes. That is huge. Every one and a half games. That's, that's mental. And he is such a brilliant player. One player who I love watching, holds the ball up well, can get in behind. He's very good on the ball and he's a great finisher. But not only that, and if they can keep Sam Axman and Almiron fit as well, they, their side can be really good. And they've reportedly agreed a feat for Joe Willock, the eight-goal scoring midfielder. I think they'll have a pretty good season. It's just hopefully they can keep them all fit and keep them all in a system that will work out. I think they'll stay up comfortably. I don't think it'll be the most exciting season for Steve Bruce's men. But I think they'll stay up comfortably in 14th position. 13th place now, I think, will be Burnley. And Burnley, for me, are my favourite underdogs in the entire division. When you think last season, their, their most expensive signing was Dale Stevens, a sixth-choice midfielder for 750000 and they stayed up with that. And they've not spent much again this summer, but I still think they'll stay up with a manager like Sean Dyche. It's, it's football where a lot of people call it Brexit ball or long football or it's dull. I think it's a brilliant style of play. It's very direct. They know exactly what they're doing. They tactically play the ball into channels, into areas where they know they'll hurt teams. It's, it's a lot more detailed and in-depth and tactical than players realise. It's not this hoof the ball forward. It's playing into areas. But anyway, that's another time and I will directly... I want to do a video on Burnley eventually and I'll explain to you what I see it as and go down into depth. But anyway, that's beside the point. I really like Burnley. I think what they're doing is very good. And I think, again, they'll stay up players like Chris Wood, Mate Vidra, Ashley Barnes. They score goals. And with Dwight McNeil on his occasional assist, five assists last season, I think they're a solid side. And they'll definitely stay up. I can't see them ever getting relegated with Sean Dyche and with Nick Pope, probably the best keeper outside of the top six in the league. He had the highest save percentage of 77% last season, second highest in 2018. He's so consistent, and I love him. And I think he'll keep them there. Again, as I said, 13th place for Burnley. 12th place, we have West Ham. And I'm going to leave you this one quick little stat here that will just kind of put into perspective why I think they'll finish in this place. In the last 10 campaigns, 31 sides have qualified for the Europa League. And in that, only nine sides have improved their position on the year before when they qualified for the Europa. But out of the 
top six or the Super League sides, only Southampton and West Ham are the two that have ever bettered their position when they've qualified for Europe. This just shows how difficult it is and how much of a strain European football has on sides, especially when the depth isn't there and they haven't got the money to back the team. And I think West Ham haven't backed the team. They've obviously like Jesse Lingard. He's gone back to Manchester United. Doesn't look like he will be joining West Ham anytime soon. And I think they're going to miss out on him. Mikand Antonio was a top goal scorer, along with Suchik, both of them getting 10 goals a season. I think they'll have a good season. They're a good side. They've got a lot of attacking players who are very good on the eye. But I just think the strain of European football will be too much for this squad. I still think they'll have a good season. 12th place for West Ham. 11th place now, and I think it will be Brighton. I think the thing is, we, everyone obviously jokes on social media about the XG with Brighton. But I do think it, there's a real reason for it. Brighton creates so many chances and they just need one striker like Danny Welbeck or Mopai or Mupai, however you say his name. I don't know why I always struggle with his name, but you guys know that on this channel. If one of them can just get a bit of form, just a bit of confidence, they will easily push for the top half of the table because the amount of chances they create is ridiculous. And if they can get Tariq Lamptey fit, obviously he still is out with a hamstring injury. If they can get him in that side you know what happens with him. He goes on so he bombs on so far forward, creates so many problems for fullbacks. I think they will have a really good season this year, and I really hope they do because I love the expansive style of play, and I do think they'll struggle without Ben White, but hopefully they'll do all right, guys, and I think they'll finish 11th place. 10th spot now, I think it will be Rafa Benitez's man, and I still can't believe I'm saying it's Rafa Benitez and Everton. It's crazy. And here we go. There's a little bit of a pun for you here. And I think the biggest thing for Everton this year is if they can make it back to good is son. Good is son because they didn't play well at home at all last season. It was their worst home record in their history in the top flight. And they really need to change that. And they need, they need players like Richarlison and Calvert-Lewin to consistently do it. Because Calvert-Lewin's goal scoring record was so good half of the first half of the season. But he only finished on 16. It kind of really fell off. Which... Seems I can't believe I'm saying 16 goals isn't good enough, but he could score so many more. And Richarlison needs to be more consistent because he's 24 now. There's no more excuses of him being a young player. He really needs to step it up. And if they ever think they're going to finish higher than 10th or higher than 9th or even push for Europe, they need to get rid of Pickford. Pickford is a mistake. I know a lot of people say, yes, he was brilliant in the Euros, but we saw in the final again a lot of errors, a lot of errors constantly. And I'm, I'm one person that I occasionally hold my hands up when he has a good game, but I still don't think he's good enough. And I think he will be the reason why Everton can't push on for Europe. And that's why I'm going to go for 10th place for Rafa Benitez, his men, Everton. Ninth place now, I think, will be Aston Villa. I know a lot of people are really worried for them, obviously losing Jack Grealish to Man City, but they've invested so well. Honestly, so, so well. And they're still being linked with players every now and then. And I still think they'll sign more players by the time this video has gone out, knowing my luck. Because it always seems to happen when I talk about players signing. They go in and just sign. But they have signed Leon Bailey, a brilliant right winger, left footed, who's got a brilliant shot on him. Can be very good, but he's very inconsistent. But he's very much like Bertrand Traore. He loves to cut in on that left foot and will score a lot of goals. And obviously Buendia they've signed, Danny Ings. They're really building something here at the Villa. And I think they've replaced Grealish very well in Buendia. And Buendia also can play in the number 10. Obviously Watkins can play on the left wing. The, 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 the formations and the styles of play and the the different positions all these players can play in is endless. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they work. And I think Dean Smith and Craig Shakespeare have got a really good setup here. Very good side. And obviously signing Ashley Leung who can play basically just anywhere. I know he's very old and he's not really going to do much. But he's a really, really, really good player to have in and around the squad. A lot of European experience coming off the back of this Serie A win with Inter Milan. And I think they'll be quite good this year. I don't think it'll be as good as everyone's saying. So not a lot of people are thinking European football. But I still think ninth finish... I think it's a very good finish for them this season. Ninth place for Aston Villa. Eighth place now, I think, will be Leeds United. And I don't think they'll they'll have this second season syndrome or this burnout that a lot of people are seeing. They've tactically improved the squad. And it's a very, very good squad. And with players like Dallas and Furpo signed, they're going to be so good this season. Honestly, the energy, I think it's going to be brilliant. I can't wait to see Leeds play. I love watching them play. I love the style of football. It's so brilliant on the eye and great to watch. And I think they'll have a very good season again. Bamford, we saw, he proved everyone wrong and I think he'll do it again because I think he's still got a point to prove because he needs to get into that England squad so I still think he'll be scoring the goals Rodrigo will be scoring the goals again Harrison signed on a permanent finally after playing 
last 15 years, I swear, on loan. But I think they're building something here, and I think Leeds can slowly keep building and pushing for that European football. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but I think they're just going to finish 8th place. Now on to 7th spot, and I think now this is when it gets a bit more difficult. We all know the sides that are going to be around in and around this area, but it's just what position. And I think Arsenal will finish 7th. I think this young, vibrant... Interesting side that we don't really know what's to come of Arteta's team, how they'll play, very inconsistent at points, but they've got no European football, so they've got no constraints of midweek games. And I think that will really help this young, vibrant squad really push on through the season goes. I think Lacazette, again, will be huge, but I think this will be the time we start to see the integration of more youth players into this side with Bakaya Saka, with Emil Smith, uh, Emil Smith Rowe. Jeez, that's a, real, that's a proper tongue twister. Emil Smith Rowe. Rowe and maybe Balogun and other youth players coming into this side but I'm quite excited to see what Arsenal can do this year so I'm going to say Arsenal 7th spot. 6th place now I think will be Nuno Espirito Santos's team Tottenham Hotspur and a lot of people don't think they're going to do very well but they're starting to build something again as I've said being linked with a lot of players and made quite a few signings and who knows what's going to happen with Harry Kane but it looks like at the moment with Jack Grish having gone to Man City Harry Kane will stop at the side and they've got Son on a new contract it, you never know, this could be quite a positive for Tottenham. We'll just have to wait and see kind of how it goes with Nuno Espirito de Santos' side. But what you know with his kind of play and play, it's going to be defensively solid and it's going to be counter-attacking style. That's really what it is going to be. It should be very interesting to see how they do, but I think they're going to have quite a good season. They've got quite a solid squad. squad. Quite a solid squad, really. Oh, I'm struggling with more words. But yes, Tottenham, sixth place. Now to fifth spot, and it's the question that's been playing on my mind. Have Leicester blown their biggest chances in the last couple of years to get that top four? And I think they have done. I think fifth spot will be the highest they can really finish this season. Obviously with Fafana being injured in pre-season, which was horrible to see. But... There's reliance on players like Vardy, and I keep saying it every year, will he fall off? And he never seems to, but this kind of finally will be the year. We've seen it in pre-season. He doesn't seem to have that edge that he used to, that pace. He's slowing his game down a bit, running a lot less, pressing a lot less. Ian Acho is a player who really needs to step up this season. Will he, Ian Acho, will he really compete with Vardy? I know he did at one point, but that was only for a few games near the end of the season, a little bit. So we're going to have to wait and see, but I think Leicester will struggle to get into this top four this season. I think they've blown their biggest chances, and with Madison potentially going out the doors, who knows? We'll have to wait and see, but Leicester, for me, will be fifth spot. Fourth spot now, I believe, will be Manchester United. And yes, I know they've made a few acquisitions with Sancho coming in, potentially Varane. Who knows what's going to happen? But overall, I still don't think the squad is good enough. When you look at that midfield, the fact that Fred and McTominay, they're still in the squad. They're still not good enough. Paul Pogba doesn't seem to do it in a Manchester United shirt. I don't know how it's going to work. I still don't think Rashford is as good as people really think. I think he can be very inconsistent. Martial isn't good enough. I don't think the squad is as good as it, people really think. Yes, obviously they've had a very good season the last couple of seasons, but I think it's really helped that everyone else has been so poor in the top five. But I think a lot of teams have really invested this summer. And I think Manchester United will finish fourth, which I still think is a very good season, but I really think we'll see the cracks in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tactics and style of play. And I think it'll be found out and potentially could get sacked before the end of the season. Third place now, and I think it will be Liverpool. And yes, I know obviously last season it really didn't go well, but then they went into the last 10 games with the best form, with the last six games winning all six. It's very good from Liverpool, and they've got their two main men back. They've got Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk, and they've added to the squad. So really you'd expect big things from them this year, but I still think the way Chelsea and Man City are investing in their squad, I don't think they can compete. I think Liverpool really need to invest heavily into that squad if they're really going to compete with the top two and I think again as I've said they've blown their chances and they've blown their chances in the near future to really push on and try and get that title again. Second place now I think will be Chelsea and a lot of people think they're going to win the league but I still think their side isn't there it's just not quite there they've, they've not got that balance with Tuchel's side I think with Romelu Lukaku coming back I think that'll be a huge sign I think it'll be vital to that side he'll be able to hold the ball up spray it around, link a lot of other attacking players into the going forward. I think it'll be brilliant to watch them play next year and maybe Havertz will have a very good season because we saw coming to the end of it, he really came to his own and held his own under this new Thomas Tuchel style of play. And I think he'll be huge again this season. So we'll have to wait and see. But I think Chelsea are 
just not quite there. I think they'll have a good comp good campaign, push Man City, but I just don't think they've got enough quality in the final third in the end. Now to first place, as you know, it is Manchester City. And I don't think this is even a debate, guys. When you think about this logically, now let's just even just let's just think about the players going forward, okay? So we have Kevin De Bruyne, Phil Foden, Ferran Torres, Riyad Mahrez, Phil Foden, Gabriel Jesus. It's ridiculous. It is insane the, what they've got going forward. They've obviously got a brilliant midfield. They've got a brilliant defence. I think they've really got a cheat code. And sorry, Jack Grealish. Did I not just mention Jack Grealish? I probably did. But Jack Grealish as well, adding to that. It's going to be huge for them this season. They're going to score so many goals. But I don't think the Premier League is their main priority and their focus. They obviously want that Champions League. But I think they'll just casually get the Premier League on their way. And that is it. So a huge thank you for watching, guys. Please like, comment and subscribe. You don't realise how much it helps. But yes. Thank you, Buckhead Sam, over and out. More videos coming your way. Goodbye.